So our scene is looking pretty good now. Let's add some camera motion to really bring this whole thing to life. To do that, we're going to need to create a new camera. We could use our perspective camera, but if we do, then we wouldn't be able to tumble around and see objects from our perspective camera because it would be occupied. It would, it would have animation on it. So we're going to keep our perspective camera free by creating a second camera that'll allow us to focus on the animation. We create a camera just like we create many other objects. If we go up to create cameras and we're just going to choose camera. Now you'll see when we did that, it created a camera at our origin. And you'll see over here in our outliner, camera one. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this and I'm gonna call this render cam. I do that so I'll know that this is the camera I want to render from. If you have multiple shots in your scene, you may call one camera shot one and another camera shot two. For this case, we're just going to use one camera. Now you'll see my camera was created, but it was kind of, again, created at the origin point in the center of this bridge. So like any other object, I can move this camera around. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it until we can see it in our viewport. However, it would be nice to be able to see what this camera sees. We can change our view just by going to Panels, Perspective, and going to the Render Cam. And now you'll be able to see what our render camera sees. And you'll see that I'm kind of pointing in the wrong direction. I would need to tumble around here to be able to see my bridge. If I go back to my Perspective Camera, you'll see that I moved my camera when I was navigating around from inside of it. So both of these views are useful. I want to be able to see through the camera, but at the same time, I want to be able to move the camera in my perspective view. So I'm going to change my layout to allow me to do both. If I go to panels and then layout, I can choose two panes side by side. This will split my view into one camera for my perspective camera, and then my other camera is currently set to the side camera. I'll go to panels and I'm gonna change that to my render camera. And so now you'll see when I move the camera in my perspective view, I can see what the render camera is seeing in the render camera view. However, there's still one problem here. You'll notice the shape of this window. It's kind of like a piece of paper. It's taller than it is wide, right? However, when you go to a movie theater or you watch a movie on your TV or your computer screen, it's usually wider than it is tall. So what we're seeing in our viewport is not exactly what we're going to get in the final animation. Um, Maya allows us to dynamically change the size of these, but I can't dynamically change the size of my TV. So I need to see the shape of my TV screen or the shape of my computer monitor screen in the viewport so I'll know what I'm actually going to be able to see through this camera when the animation is finished. To do that, there's a button along our viewport menu shelf here that says resolution gate. It's a little blue dot inside of a white box. And if I click that, you'll be able to see an outlined region that shows us exactly what we're going to see in our final camera. Anything that's out here in this gray area will not be visible, but everything within this box will be visible. Something I do that makes this a little bit more evident is if I go to the attribute editor and I make sure that I have my render cam selected, I can do that a few different ways. I can either click it in my perspective view, I can click it in my outliner, or I can click this little camera up here in my render cam viewport that will select my render cam. And if I scroll down in my render cam shape node until I find display options, then I can change this mask information. Currently, it's somewhat translucent, so I can still see elements outside of this. And occasionally I'll forget that these are not going to render off screen or subconsciously I'll just not pay attention to it. So I'm going to make this completely opaque where I can't see through it. And again, just to make this even more evident, I usually change this to black. 
And so now it's very obvious what we're going to see in our final render. It's within this box. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my channel box just to give us a little bit more space um, so we can see. Now camera animation can seem complicated, but on the fundamental levels, it's just like animating any other object. I have an object in here. I can place it in one location on frame one, and if I hit S, I've set a keyframe on that camera. As I move along my timeline, I can place it in another location in a different part of my timeline and hit S. And now if I click in my render cam window, you'll be able to see that I have some camera animation. This however is not showing off my animation the best in the world. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those keyframes. And we're going to create some animation on this camera that shows the audience our animation in the most effective way possible. I'm going to do this by primarily thinking of each keyframe as a composition. I am currently on frame one, so I'm going to place my camera in a location that shows the scene the best it possibly can. So if I start here, we're able to see the mountains, we're able to see our red car, maybe something like this, we're able to see the top of the bridge and maybe get a little bit more of a horizon on that. So this is a pretty good spot for our animation to start. So again, I will make sure my camera is selected and then I'll hit S to set a keyframe on that selected object. So as our animation progresses though, this becomes a less effective camera view to be able to see the important parts of the animation. So on frame 60, I'll change my camera and create a new keyframe that shows the action a little better. So maybe something like this. If this is where I want my camera to be, I'll make sure the camera is selected and I'll press S to set another keyframe. And now you'll see that my camera starts from my first pose and progresses through to show the action a little more clearly. Now from here, if I just kept my camera here, it, it shows the majority of the important parts pretty well. But if I were to just hit play on this, it will feel like the camera suddenly stops for no real reason. So just to keep the camera from being distracting, I'm going to add a little bit more animation to the end of this to make it feel like the scene is kind of settling. So I'll tumble around just a little bit and maybe pan forward to here. Again, select my camera and hit S. And so now even after we get to this and pose, my camera still continues to move just a little bit. One of the biggest mistakes people make in animating their camera is they animate way too much. So for example, some people will start from here and by the time they're done, they have tumbled all over our scene just to show them how big and glorious it is. And what will happen is when the audience watches that, they'll get motion sick. Camera animation is something that should not be obviously noticeable in your animation. If the viewer says, wow, that camera animation was crazy, that's not a compliment. Camera animation should emphasize the vehicle animation, not distract from it. So I'm going to keep my animation pretty subtle.